Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the third part in our video series on economic applications of dynamic programming. In this video, we're going to work through a planner's problem. Let's go. So suppose we have a planner deciding on what the optimal consumption saving decision is for society over an infinite continuous time horizon with instantaneous preferences being denoted by the CRRA type. Mathematically speaking, the problem is expressed as maximizing a infinite sum of discounted utilities at each moment where our choice variable is a specific uh, consumption bundle at moment t, subject to uh, standard production technology here. And we have a law of motion where this law of motion does not go and contain capital uh, depreciation. Mathematically speaking, the corresponding hamilton jacobi bellman equation is just going to be the same like we've seen from before. And we're tasked with solving for the policy functions with regards to consumption and capital. Now, we need to think about this, that capital, when you're really choosing that, that's just thinking about consumption later. So that's the perspective that we're going to be going with. So to solve this problem, we're going to follow seven steps. Step number one is that we're going to write down our hamilton jacobi bellman equation. Uh, our next step is that we're going to take our first order condition and solve for this tentative uh, policy function denoted by C tilde T. Um, step number three is that we're going to use this result to solve for our initial Bellman equations. Uh, step number four is that we're going to have to take a guess for what our value function is. Step number five is that we're going to sub our guess into our results for step number three and solve for the coefficients. Uh, step number six is that we're going to sub the solution of our coefficients into our guess for our value function VKT. And step number seven is that we're going to use our solution for VKT to solve for our policy functions for C T star and K T star. So step number one is that we're going to write down our Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation, right? This is just plug and chug. We're going to plug in our instantaneous preferences being the CRA type and our law of motion, which we specified from before. And then step number two is that we're going to take our first order conditions and solve for our tentative uh, policy function here. Um, just rearranging uh, this first order condition, we go and we see that it is simply our derivative of our value function with respect to KT raised to the power of one negative one all over theta. Uh, step number three is that we're going to sub this result into our initial Bellman equation. So we're going to go and take that and we're going to go and plug it in there and we're going to simplify it all the way down till we get this uh, value in this circle here. Um, step number four is that then we're going to go and take a guess for what VK is and we're going to work this math through. We're going to sub this guess back into our coefficients. So we're going to first note based on our guess that our derivative of VKT is equal to one minus theta times C2, which is our coefficient that we go and we have on K times KT raised to the power of negative theta. We go and we have some math here, but what we go and we note here is that we need this equality to hold. So we have to have a definition of what C1 and C2 is going to be. So for C1, we go and we identify it as A times one over theta all over R times C2. And for C2, we have one over theta times theta over R raised to the power of theta here. That's just, you know, working through the math. Step number six is that we're going to sub our solution for our coefficients and to our guess for what VKT is, right? This is very important because we're going to take our derivative of this here in step number seven, and we're going to solve for what our policy function is. And it's very cleanly here being R over theta times K star of T. Now, I would just stop here, right? But we're solving for them both. And the reason why I have to solve for them both, because it's not going to be like a cake eating problem where things are so clear. We have capital accumulation here. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to use our law of motion, right? That we go and we have, and we're going to go and plug it in there. Now, this is just something that we're going to go and have to know is that this is a unique Bernoulli differential equation, which has a specific solution. So this is just something, you know, I looked up uh, myself and this is what the solution would go and look like here. So this is how we would go and solve the, this problem. So um, I think the main takeaway here is that uh, things get really messy when we're thinking about uh, continuous time. And the reason why I didn't put in a depreciation rate here is because, you know, things would not end up so easily when we're going and we're working uh, that through. Um, 
I hope this video helps. I hope it gives you more of an understanding of continuous time dynamic programming. I will see you guys later. Take care.